we're currently waiting for a taxi, so we used Cabify. But um, it's been a while and no one accepted our quote, so we might actually have to take the, the taxis that are parked there. Cusco is really, really um, a high altitude city, so it's located at, I think, 3,000, 3 or 400 meters above the sea level. Um, so a lot of people feel unwell when arriving here, um, really, really dizzy, feel shortness of breath. All right, so <laughs> our cab is still not arriving, so uh, we're gonna probably sort that out. So the taxi finally arrived and in 20 minutes we were at the hotel. So we booked the hotel called El Anda Riego. It was around 30 pounds per night or 35 dollars and it was really, really good. So the overall condition is a bit odd, so I still don't feel like dizzy or throwing up at all. Um, feel weak, um, I did feel a little bit weak in Lima though, probably because of the acclimatization. Uh, it was very different weather compared to London. And here, I was just feeling really incredibly tired than going up the stairs. This is our hotel, it's called um, El Anda Riego BNB. It's right in, at the, in the heart of Cusco and we are heading to the city centre. It's currently 7.30 p.m. Uh, we still want to go to sleep early but um, we just wanted to take a look um, at how Cusco looks uh, in the evening um, before you know we need to go to sleep. And then the morning came and we felt really, really bad. Um, we literally had to drag ourselves to the breakfast room. We spent a good couple of hours in the room waiting for aspirin to work and also had some coca tea and coca mint. Um, generally feeling a lot better. Uh, maybe it's just, you know, also a matter of getting used to the altitude. Uh, but yeah, feeling a bit better, a lot better, I'd say. And we're off to explore the basically Cusco before taking our train at 1 p.m. So many people think that Cusco is a teeny tiny city and you can walk uh, all around the city center in 15 to 20 minutes, but I must tell you that it is absolutely not true. Cusco is actually huge, the population is around 500,000 people, obviously all the 500,000 people don't live in the city center, so the city center isn't enormous, but it is quite big and you probably need a day or a day and a half or maybe even two days to be able to see most of the landmarks and most of the beautiful streets of Cusco. Cusco used to be an incredibly rich city. It used to be a capital of the Incan Empire. The empire was huge, so you can only imagine how stunning the city was. And I would say it still is, because Cusco is generally really, really pretty. Um, the kind of architecture style of Cusco is Andean Barocco. It's a mix of a Spanish Barocco and Andean architecture. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of things to do. Uh, we actually uh, found Cusco pretty pricey if you want to go to good restaurants. However, if you want to go to a cafeteria, you can easily spend something like uh, two or three US dollars for a sandwich and that would be a good lunch. So it was a time for us to go to the office of Inca Rail to grab a train to Machu Picchu.
Normally, the easiest uh, way to get to Machu Picchu would be buying a ticket on either Inca Rail or Peru Rail website. Uh, these are basically two major train providers uh, for Peru. And that ticket would consist of two tickets, actually. So you would get a bus, a mini bus to Oleta Tambo, where you would disembark and wait for about maybe 45 minutes to one and a half hours for your train um, to Aguas Calientes, uh, where basically basically Machu Picchu is located. So basically Aguas Calientes is a hub for exploring Machu Picchu. That's where all the tourists stay. Generally, the cheapest train costs uh, from $70 to $80 per person each way. So it's pretty pricey, but it's also a nice train. Um, it's beautiful inside. But it's worth mentioning that it doesn't have enough leg space, especially if you're tall, because you are given a table for four and it really depends on your neighbors how tall they are and how much luggage they have. There are no shelves on top of the train to store the backpacks and there is just generally not enough storage so a lot of people just end up throwing their backpacks um, where their legs are which leaves no space for other people kind of to stretch the legs. Luckily it's just one hour and a half uh, to two hours journey so it's not too critical but I imagine it might get uncomfortable for some people especially if you just want to stretch your legs. It's absolutely not allowed to stand up or do anything because of really really strict COVID rules, you are obliged to wear a double mask and the train attendants are really, really strict. The moment somebody tries to sip some water, uh, they just run to you and say that's not allowed, you cannot eat, you cannot drink, you cannot do anything. There are, of course, more expensive trains, and I also heard that Peru Rail is not as strict as Inca Rail, but the basic trains from Peru Rail are not as nice as the Inca Rail trains. They don't have such large windows. So basically, once you arrive in Aguas Calientes, that's how a part of the high street looks like. So that's the city center. Basically, there are train tracks in the middle of the city and shops and restaurants on the sides of it. It's 6.20 p.m. We arrived to Aguas Calientes, the last stop before Machu Picchu. When we arrived, we couldn't believe this is the high street. In the middle, there are train tracks. We even asked whether it's a high street, and they told us yes. So once we dropped our bags at the hotel, uh, we decided to go to the ticket office to buy the shuttle bus tickets to Machu Picchu because for some reason we didn't buy them online. We thought they would be cheaper there and they weren't. So it's definitely worth buying them online because there is always a large queue. Afterwards, uh, we went for a quick dinner. Um, the restaurants in Aquas Calientes are a little bit pricey. Some mains are around 17 US dollars. Good morning, we just got ready. It's 5 a.m. Woke up at 4.30, but in reality we actually woke up earlier because people started waking up around 4 and the walls here are paper thin so you can pretty much hear everything and yeah, you can't really sleep past 4 a.m. Um, we got a marvelous river view, but we couldn't see it because we checked in when it was dark and it's still dark when we woke up. But the river is pretty noisy, but at night it just sounded like air conditioning, which is pretty unique. At 5.20 a.m. we were already waiting for our shuttle bus because we had the earliest entrance at 6 a.m. Uh, it took us um, around 10 minutes to get in. Um, I think we got in in the third bus. There are so many buses, they go so frequently, so don't worry if you see a large queue. Um, there will be also a queue to enter Machu Picchu, but also don't worry. We wanted to enter early because we saw a lot of blog posts recommending to go inside early because you have less people, but unfortunately Unfortunately, it wasn't a great idea because for the three and a half hours we couldn't see anything. And in case of Machu Picchu, unfortunately, you cannot walk around the park and go back to the viewing point uh, because it's just kind of one way direction. So if you don't see Machu Picchu, all you can do is just sit and wait. And it can be really, really cold, it can be rainy. There are also no toilets and no places to sit apart from, I don't know, your rail, raincoats and backpacks. So yeah, you've got just to be really, really patient in case you don't see much picture in the morning. And from my understanding, that happens quite frequently in April and May. Um, so it only cleared up 
at around 9.30 and a.m. And I just wish we got a later entrance around 9 a.m. because that would have saved us from spending so much time outside and freezing and waiting, not even knowing that we would be able to see the glorious, beautiful Machu Picchu. But as you can see, in the end, it cleared up. Um, it worked out. We saw it. It's really beautiful. I think the camera just kind of show how beautiful it is in real life. Um, so despite the kind of uh, misfortune we had with um, seeing much picture, I would totally, totally recommend you going there and seeing it for yourself because it is absolutely stunning. At around 11 a.m. we got back to Aguas Calientes and found a place for lunch because we were really, really starving. We were really happy discussing Machu Picchu and how beautiful it was when um, the waiter told us really bad news. So basically the train, the return train to Cusco, which we were supposed to take at 2 p.m. was cancelled along with all the other trains and the next train would be only in two days which absolutely didn't work for us because we had a flight from Cusco that we had to take the next day and staying in Aguas Calientes for two more nights basically meant that we will lose the rest of our trip we wouldn't be able go, we wouldn't be able to go to La Paz and we wouldn't be able to go to Salardo Uni Ecuador and basically the rest of our trip so the problem was that Aguas Calientes is not connected to um, the rest of Peru by road. So to get out of Aguas Calientes, you either need to take a train or walk to the nearest road. And the nearest road was starting in a place called Hidroelectrica. So in order to get there, you would actually need to walk for 11 kilometers on the train tracks. Um, that would take around two and a half hours with all your bags and baggage and whatever you have. And from there, there you need to take a series of minibuses. But because of a protest, we just didn't know if there would be any minibuses because everybody in the town told us to stay in Aguas Calientes and, uh, you know, wait for the protest to be over because there's just no certainty that there will be buses. But as I told you before, we just didn't have a choice. So we were prepared to walk for two and a half hours to just find out if there will be buses or not. And just to try to get out of there by any means. Actually, I quite enjoyed the hike to Hydroelectric. It was really beautiful, really, really nice scenery. And at the end, as you can see, we found minibuses. We were waiting for about an hour to um, for the bus to get full. We were actually charged around 100 soles per person, which is around 25 to 30 US dollars. And at around 4.30 we departed, but we only drove for about 10 minutes because we reached a point where there were roadworks, which would last until 6 p.m. So we had to wait for about an hour and a half just doing nothing and eating, being eaten alive life by mosquitoes um, for the road to open. We were pretty happy we arrived 
early because more and more people started arriving to Hidroelectrica, even though people in Aguascalientes were really secretive and were telling people not to go to Hidroelectrica. And just generally not so many people know about this route. Many backpackers know because it's another way to get to Machu Picchu and it generally costs way less than the train. At 6 p.m. sharp, all the cars started driving and some of the cars, I must tell you, were driving like crazy. I was actually really happy it was dark because I don't think my heart would have taken it um, if it was light because first of all it was on a high altitude, there were cars trying to get in from the other side and at the same time some cars were trying to overtake our cars and you know it was just so easy for um, a minibus to just you know fly into nowhere and fall. This journey on an unpaved road took around 45 minutes, then they got to Santa Teresa and changed into a much better and nicer minibus. And then there was a paved nice road, but it was extremely windy, so I got really, really motion sick and was feeling extremely unwell. So I was so happy once we got to Ole Tambo, and the road from there wasn't too bad. It took around 3 hours to get to Ole Tambo. And that's where it got tricky because some of the roads were blocked by the protesters and actually that was one of the roads we took. So it was blocked by a huge tree which we tried to lift but we couldn't. So we had to go back and take another road. And finally at um, half past midnight we made it to Cusco. I was extremely unwell and extremely tired but to be fair at the same time we were so so happy that we made it to Cusco despite everything and everyone who was telling us that we wouldn't be able to get there. <laughs> We're feeling pretty buttered today, I'd say. Are we feeling buttered? I'm fine. Okay. I'm feeling exhausted. After yesterday's adventure and then like six hours of sleeping. Well, we got to go, we got to explore Cusco again. Wish us luck. By the way, two weeks later, Inca Rail still hasn't refunded us money for the train. That's why I 
don't actually recommend them. So that's how our easy and hustle-free trip to Machu Picchu turned uh, into a nightmare uh, and quite an adventure. And I hope you guys found this video interesting because things like this happen um, a couple of times per year at least. So in case you have to get out of Machu Picchu, you know now that there is a way, not the most glamorous one, but there is one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you guys in um, the next one. And the next video will be from La Paz. So bye bye. Sorry that this video was um, a little bit pessimistic, but um, just in general, it was quite a tough adventure.